Hey everyone, let's go to BHP Exchange number 4. And in this video, we're going to cover why is one turn loss BHP Exchange. This strategy was invented because the normal BHP Exchange double reclining receiver was a bit better for black. So it's a new strategy for white. And this strategy starts totally differently from ordinary BHP Exchange. Uh, there are several patterns to go to why is one turn loss BHP Exchange. So let's see one example. Uh, black plays pawn to 7f. And in normal bishop exchange, it was pawn 8d and pawn 2f. However, in one turn loss, he doesn't have to push the 8th file pawn uh, so early and pushes this pawn uh, 3d, uh, for example. And let's say pawn 2f, and then he moves the gold to 3b. Uh, so let's say gold 7h. Okay, he plays pawn to 8d now, and black plays pawn to 2e. And, you know, if white plays pawn to 8e, this is a side pawn picker opening, but at this position, White suddenly makes a bishop trade. Wow. Well, this is a pure one move loss, right? Uh, because Black hasn't even moved the bishop from 8h to 7g. He didn't use any move to do that. So it's one move loss for White. So uh, technically, now White is one and a half moves behind Black. And then white plays silver to 2b. And silver indirectly stopping black from going pawn to 2d, as we said in previous videos. And, uh, well, there are several other patterns to go into one turn loss bishop exchange. Uh, one example is, uh, let's say in the fifth move, instead of gold to 7h, black can of course go pawn to 2e. Well, then white makes the bishop trade now, and moves the silver to 2b like that. So anyway, uh, White makes the bishop trade from his side when Black hasn't even moved the bishop to 7g. Uh, so uh, here's the question. What's the point of doing this? Why does White do that? Uh, well, basically, the important difference of this one turn loss bishop exchange from ordinary bishop exchange is that the 8th file pawn is still on 8c uh, in this case. And in the other pattern I've shown you, uh, this line, the pawn is on 8d. So the pawn is not pushed to 8e, uh, which is why black didn't have to move the bishop to 7g in the first place. So, yeah, but what practical difference does this pawn make? And you can see the answer to it. If they go into double reclining silver identical formation from this position, uh, so let's say they went for uh, double reclining silver like moves. Okay, so here, the identical position of double reclining silver. Uh, but strictly speaking, it's not identical formation. Uh, there's this difference. Black's pawn is on 2e, white's pawn is on 8d, uh, because white has lost one turn, and it's black turn to play. Okay, so what's the point of this pawn on 8d? Uh, well, actually, if the pawn was here, uh, we've learned that this position is a little bit good for black. I'll uh, start from this pawn 4e attack. However, when a pawn is on 8d, this position is playable for white. Amazing. Uh, well, the reason is black's typical attack uh, from pawn 4e is based on this white's weak point of knight's head. Black can attack there anytime. However, as you can see, the pawn is on 8d, so this knight can leap over to 8e anytime attacking the silver. So if we can make a pretty fast counterattack anytime, so it's not so easy for black to make a good position for him as in normal double reclining silver. And uh, moreover, uh, let's say black uh, castled from here, then actually white can go for castling too. And let's say uh, rook to 4h, and he can even castle his king to 2b. Uh, well, I've said uh, he's not supposed to castle when he's playing in identical position double reclining silver. Uh, it's like a whole defense formation, but when white wants to do that, he was supposed to uh, not to move this knight. Uh, he has to keep it here, right? But in one turn loss bishop exchange, he can bring the knight over to 7c while he castles. 
So he's doing both things. He castles his king and he prepares for a uh, counterattack with the knight. Uh, this is great. And this is made possible because of this pawn on AD. Uh, what I mean is, I said there's always this bishop drop attacking the knight, but yeah, you can run to AD anytime. And uh, other than that, uh, this bishop drop is also good too. I see it's attacking this square. But when it's one turn loss bishop exchange, why can the reply to that with this bishop drop and it's fine? Well, if it was a normal bishop exchange opening like this, black can sack his bishop and drop the gold to here, and it's actually a disaster for white. White couldn't have done this in normal bishop exchange, but he can do that now. So, after all, Uh, with this pawn still being on AD, white made double reclining silver as a good strategy for white. Yeah, and this idea of uh, keeping the pawn in this rank is very similar to what it was for black uh, for diagram B, right? Alright, so now what should black do here? Well, if losing one turn is a good idea for white, should black be now trying to lose one move on itself too? That's ridiculous. It's not going to happen. Uh, they don't believe losing one move is good in all situations. Uh, it's doing good only in this double reclining silver. So, yeah, of course. Here, after he made the bishop trade, black tries to punish white for making that one turn loss. And how you do that is, yeah, of course, you go for rapid attack. Uh, so let's say just uh, for example, silver moves, uh, silver moves two, and silver is a three h, and silver seven b. So as you can see, white's attack is one move slower. So why not black go for rapid attack? So uh, let's say rapid advancing silver, and uh, I said black needs to push this pawn one f before he attacks in the third file, but in this case, white's one turn loss bishop exchange, white's attack is slower and there's no concern of being attacked by white's climbing silver. Uh, it's better for black to just uh, move his king over to 6 sage rather than pawn 1f and then uh, attack on the third file. And uh, if black goes for rapid attack like this, uh, white can only reply to that with, you know, just uh, reclining silver. Uh, because, as I've said in previous videos, reclining silver is often pretty good against rapid advancing silver. But the position will be different, of course, because of this pawn. So white's attack will be slower than in ordinary bishop exchange. So we can't tell which is better here. Uh, so white isn't necessarily doing good here. We can't tell. And uh, other than that, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, black can try climbing silver, and uh, oh, but this time black shouldn't go for the edge like that. Well, because yeah, again this pawn on eight D. This edge attack is based on the threat of this lance drop on eight D, right? You remember? But as you can see, you can drop the lance eight D now. So instead of going uh, on the first file, after all. Black then turns to this file attacking a 3e e square. So the meaning of this uh, strategy is uh, when it's compared to a normal rapid advancing silver, Black managed to make White push this pawn for nothing, right? So White has already lost one turn with that bishop exchange and now he lost one move with this pawn push. And as in rapid advancing silver, he has to move his king quickly and then attack there. And uh, White basically uh, tries to defend that uh, with uh, reclining silver. Uh, you know, because black's attack is almost like a rapid advancing silver. So hopefully he can uh, deal with it. But again, this pawn is too slow. And uh, other than that, uh, he can try uh, fourth file rook or uh, right hand king too, because this pawn is still an 80, so this castle is solid. So, actually, we're seeing a resurrection of these old strategies of rapid advancing silver and climbing silver again because of this one turn loss bishop exchange. 
So this is what this strategy is all about. So if you ask them why does white make one turn loss, well the reason is it's fun, it's interesting. They don't believe making one turn loss is going to be a good thing after all, but they keep doing that because this kind of shogi hasn't been explored enough to be any joseki. So they're playing this strategy to explore the uncovered part of shogi. So I believe someday they'll come to a conclusion as to whether black can win by these old rapid attack strategies against this new one turn loss bishop exchange. Alright, so that's all for the history of bishop exchange. Uh, so from the next video, uh, we're going to go into specific josekis of bishop exchange, and I'll start from Kimura's joseki, the most famous double reclining silver joseki. Alright, so hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.